Hey, there's one, Mark. Hey, let me grab the nut. Not a bad one. I, I could probably flip him. He's not a real big one. He's like a like a nice eater. Thanks, buddy. Nice little eater size. South Dakota walleye. Scott Walsh here with my good friend Mark Quartz doing a little fishing in South Dakota. A uh, little bit breezy, but a beautiful day. Hey, and, you always uh, have wind in South Dakota, right? Well, that's the thing, right? <laughs> Playing the wind game and managing the wind, and but uh, nice little eater there to start the day. But we uh, we caught it, kept a few fish yesterday, so we're really not, not going to keep any today. So we're going to let that one let that one grow up a little bit. All right, how's it feel? Little guy. No net? Actually, you better grab the net, Scott. All right. I like the sound of that. Sounding bigger. Uh, not real big, but a nice South Dakota we'll scoop, walleye. We'll scoop them. Pulling a few bottom bouncers, a little slow death. Beautiful South Dakota walleye. These things are so healthy. I mean, they eat so well. Freshwater perch, main forage out here. There we go. All right. I'm coming. There we go. That's one of the things about pulling slow death. It's, it works really good just to leave it in the rod holder, let it load up, and the fish actually set the hook themselves. So a lot of times I'll hold one, be moving it a little bit, but the one that's in the rod holder will catch most of the fish because you don't try to set the hook too early. And, and that's the biggest thing when you're pulling slow death is not to set the hook too early, let the fish load the rod up. And basically, a lot of times in the rod holder, all I'll do is give it a couple cranks before I take the rod out of the rod holder just to tighten it up a little bit. You got one back there? I do. Nice. Not a giant one. I'll just flip this one, Mark. Nice size eater. Another one on that natural, Mark. Awesome. He seemed to, seemed to be developing a little bit of a preference for a color, it seems like. You know, we kind of start out with a handful of colors, different different color on each on each rod. Of course, we're in South Dakota, we can run two rods a person, so. Mark and I each have two rods out, and uh, that's, I think, the fourth or fifth one that's come on that natural color. Um, so it's, might have to switch out a couple rods to that. We'll get him, we'll get him back. All right, now we're talking. That didn't take long. The other thing um, that I always try to do, especially in this situation, today we've got a, a pretty good breeze blowing. And I always like to concentrate on these windy shores. And what will happen is a lot of these freshwater shrimp and that stuff gets blown into the cover and these fish will sit right on the edge of the weeds. So what we're doing is we're using both our 360 side imaging, live and all those tools. And we're trying to stay right along the edge of the weeds right on that edge. Nice job, let's catch another one. I'll take another killer crawler. Another killer crawler. So this is the cool thing about the Killer Crawler and the Fusion 19 slow turn hook. The crawler is built for exactly this hook. And all you wanna do is just thread it on like you would a live crawler, but you don't have the mess. You don't have to worry about them getting warm. None of that. You can change colors, but you wanna thread it on. And you'll notice there's a hollow part in the actual Killer Crawler, and that's where you wanna come out at. You want it to hang off just like a little chunk of worm. Slide it up on that hook keeper. And ultimately, the biggest test is that it spins in the water. So we want that thing to do that exact thing, that nice slow turn going through the water. Simple and easy. Nice one, Mark. Yeah, another nice prairie pothole region walleye. Bring him right up right up to you. Thank you. That one's on the four inch crawler, watermelon pearl. But what we're doing today, um, so we're pulling bottom bouncers and there's a couple things I like to do. Um, as Scott said earlier, we're using multiple rods. So when we're doing that, I've got Scott set up with 710 uh, medium action rods and that gets him away from the boat. I'm using a seven footer medium there again. But the other thing I do is Scott's set up in the back with ounce and a half bottom bouncers, and I run two ounce up here. That way we can have our rods out. I'm a little bit shorter than back than what he is. He's behind the boat and my rod's inside of his, so we never have to worry about a tangle. So how I have my boat set up, I've got my cannon rod holders on an extension up here, and I have multiple ways I can adjust this. 
this little knob right here so I can adjust it up, down, whatever. If there's a lot of weeds in the water, what I like to do is actually put my tip down in the water and that'll keep the weeds from going down my line. It'll actually just get caught up on my tip. I can shake them off. Um, but having the adjustments up here, Scott's got the standard rod holder in the back, just in the tracks. But this way, with the extension, I just screw it right into my floor. I'm not screwing into my fiberglass. I don't have to worry about it. Works perfect. That one really smoked it, Mark. Did it? Yeah. This one might take a net. Well, the rod just like doubled over. Oh, yeah, it's a nice one. Real nice one. There we go. Beauty. That's what we're looking for. It's kind of the way to end the day right there, huh? Beautiful South Dakota walleye, Scotty. Yeah, that one, I just happened to be looking at the rod, and it just like doubled right over, right in the corner. You know, and that's one thing, Scotty. Uh, we're pulling slow death, but these cannon rod holders work good for all your fishing needs, whether you're using a spinning rod, bait caster, trolling, jigging, whatever you want, cannon's got you covered. I'm Mark Kortz with Scott Walsh. Stay tuned for more Midwest Outdoors.